Hello, everybody. Um, first of all, happy St. Patrick's Day. As you can see, I'm wearing my green. It's the TARDIS driving the DeLorean. So um, I am so far in the future right now that you just could not even believe or the past or anywhere in space and time. So, um, but I'm at my home and I am, um, um, happy to be celebrating my first St. Patrick's Day completely stone sober. sober. Well, there might've been once in the past now that I think about it, but I wasn't taking my sobriety seriously back then. So I don't count it anyway. Um, I have some news. Um, well, you guys haven't been up on the skinny um, about a physical therapist at my physical therapist's office who I have a huge ass crush on. Um, he is really hot. Um, let me back up some, so I'm actually in the frame. He is really hot. Um, I was so dead set that he was gay until I found out, found out that he was married to a woman. Well, he was my physical therapist from when I had knee surgery um, last year, last summer. So I got to spend a lot of time with him and it was wonderful. But um, he informs me today that his wife is expecting and he's going to be a dad. And let me tell you what, he's going to be one hot dad. Um, but yeah, I've given up the fight though. His wife wins. She can have him. He has a baby coming, so uh, that was a hard, that was a tough pill to swallow. But um, anyways, I guess since it's St. Patrick's Day, I thought I might tell you a story about how St. Patrick's Day happens in St. Louis, where I lived for 18 years. Well, 17 years, and during that 18 years that my parents lived in Missouri, I lived in Chicago for one of those years. Um, so 17 years in... Um, in St. Louis, um, there is a huge um, street festival, and they have a parade. And this is like the parades where it's like all the clans come, and the girls are dancing on the floats and stuff. And it's in, in an area called Dogtown, which is right next to Forest Park, which is where the World's Fair was held in um, 1904. Um, it's named Dogtown because um, I don't know if you know this, but during the World's Fair. Um, they had tribes, indigenous tribes from all over come and live in the park during the World's Fair. Well, in the area that's now known as Dogtown, during the World's Fair, all of their pets started disappearing, specifically dogs. Um, and it's been rumored that it was the indigenous tribes people getting out of the park, going into the neighborhood and stealing people's dogs to eat them. So uh, that's why it's called Dogtown. And um, it's, I don't know if it's really the Irish area of St. Louis. It's just where that parade is held. There's the big one downtown the weekend before St. Patrick's Day. But that's like when it's all corporate and not as fun. This one, you're supposed to get obliterated at. You know, everybody has a house party. Everyone just sits out. Uh, if your house is on the parade route, you just, excuse me, sit on, get on your roof, sit on, on the front porch, get out lawn chairs, whatever, and just get obliterated. Um, I went probably at least five or six years that I lived there. Pro probably, well, there was the one with, when I was with Jeff, and then... Yeah, probably at least five or six. And um, it's it's just like Mardi Gras. It's like a mini Mardi Gras. And Mardi Gras in St. Louis is pretty ruckus too and is the second largest Mardi Gras celebration in the world. Or not in the world, in the U.S. Um, only second to New Orleans. Um, sorry, let me eat this candy real quick. <laughs> All right. Whoops, I flung that open. Um, but it's it was always such a fun time. I don't, however, miss it. Um, it was 
um, just an excuse to get insanely drunk and throw away your worries for a day. Well, one year it rained and I was, what was I wearing? Oh, I know what happened. I remember now. I remember now. It was, um, we were at, um, my friend Shay's house and, um, it had rained. So everybody came inside and I was like, Shay, do you have any dresses I could wear? Cause I was really drunk and I thought being in drag would be funny. So she found me a green dress and I put it on and it fit. I was a lot more trim back then, but also doing copious amounts of meth make you very skinny. Um, and then we went outside and I started, uh, once this, the rain had stopped and we were just walking around with people and me in my dress and, um, we found another guy in a dress. And so I remember taking a photo with him. Um, and, um, he was hot. He was hot. And, um, and it was, it was, yeah, that was really nice. I liked that part. But, um, we were heading to a bar and it started to torrential downpour. I mean like down pour. So the only thing that was close for us to duck into was a porter potty. And there were about six of us in there and we stayed in there until it stopped raining. And luckily all of us had pretty full drinks. So we were able to wait out the rain and while we crowded in there, you know, um, I think it was five or six of us that were in there, I believe. And it was just Stupid things you do when you're in your mid twenties and you're drunk, like oh, let's hide in the porter potty instead of running to a bar. Um, so um, there was pictures of that somewhere as well of all of us crammed in there, climbed up on the on the sides and and everything. It was it's like that you know, that photo of the um, phone booth from like the fifties or sixties of all the guys in the phone booth. It was like that, but a porter potty, and we were all trashed. So. Um, you know, whatever. London Fog! You're on Z1077 with the Drucifer. Um, it was, um, a very, well, one, it was a learning moment because I figured out, well, we discovered that you could fit six people in one porter potty and, um, you know, we all got to know each other a little bit better because we were all crammed in there so tight while we were waiting for the rain. Um, a couple of the people with us were people from the party that I didn't know that well. So we got very intimate. <laughs> um, and finally, whenever the rain stopped, we went outside and we ended up going to the bar and whatever, whatever. Um, but, oh my God, that was just the stupid things that you do when you're young. And, you know, that's just... One more to the list, because I did a lot of stupid things when I was young. Um, and I won't get deep or anything. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just really fun um, all around still, even though it was completely asinine. Um, I had these green sunglasses that were, um, I can't remember the brand now. They're Italian and they look, they're for sports racers, um, racing sunglasses. Um, and I had some that were green and I kept on losing them all day long and I would always find them again. They were my, excuse me, they were my lucky sungla sunglasses. I think I lost them at least three or four times. Um, cause once it started to rain, I put it in my shirt and then I'd get drunk and I had beads all over me and uh, a bunch of green beads. And, um, yeah, it just get shook around by doing something stupid, like jumping up and down and, because you, you know, won a game of um, um, beer pong or flip cup or something. You know, this, the games that we always played whenever we all got together. Um, now. Woo! Sorry, I just threw my uh, vape out of my hand. So now you guys got to see what it's like when I get accidentally excited. I, I scream really loud, high pitched, Woo! like that. And, um, yeah, I can't control it. Something shocks me, um, or surprises me. <sighs> that's, that's my go-to vocal register. High pitch, like, um, like a mother who's seeing her infants 
try to climb into a fire pit or something. <gasps> so. That was fun. That was really fun. Well, I think I'm, I'm not going to make a super long video today. Um, I just wanted to say, hap or say happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody and share a quick story about my idiocracies of my youth um, when it came to St. Patrick's Day. Um, you know, stuff and things and dresses and alcohol. Um, and I don't miss those days at all. I definitely don't. And um, I'm, I'm happy that I don't have to live that way anymore. Um, cause it's, yeah, it was, it was really bad for me. See, I said I wasn't going to go dark, but I did. Oh, well, anyways, let's end it on a happy note. I'm going to show you my new favorite pop that my parents got for me for Christmas. <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg in the house. Woo -woo! Um, you can get get her on um, the Hot Topic website. That's where my parents got her, and um, she was something like twelve bucks or something like that. So it wasn't wasn't crazy expensive. Like they had they had one that was for um, 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 Elton John that was like thirty, and they almost got it for me, but it was out of stock. So. Um, but I'm happier with Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That was the one I asked for. So, anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed my video today. Please uh, like, share, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Um, I think I've announced there, there's happy mail I need to send out, and there's winnings that I need to send out, and I'm working on that. I'm currently out of my tax refund cash, and I haven't started a new job yet. But I've applied for like probably f close to 12 or 14 in the last 24 hours. So fingers crossed something happens with one of those um, so I can send all this stuff out. Because I don't think my parents are, are going to uh, be willing to send anything for me um, unless I beg, 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 beg. And they probably still won't do it. <laughs> so... Um, I will end the video here. So like I said, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.